Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Shriya Singh and today we have with us Kavita Lankesh, a renowned filmmaker and the sister of the late journalist activist Gauri Lankesh who was assassinated on September 5th, 2017. Uh, Kavita's film uh, Gauri has won the Best Human Rights Film Award at the Toronto Women's Film Festival 2022 and today she has joined us to talk more about this. So welcome, welcome to News Click, Kavita, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, first off, congratulations on this award. Uh, can you tell us something about the journey of this film and how uh, did the making of this film go? Did you face any challenges while filming? Yeah, a lot of it actually. The initially when uh, I heard there was a, you know, a Free Press Unlimited, a company called Free Press Unlimited in Amsterdam, who were funding projects and uh, they were asking, seeking projects throughout the world. To impunity towards journalists and uh, I thought okay why not apply somebody had told me why don't you apply it and I was really hesitant because uh, one a, it was Gauri second you know the way she was assassinated do I really want to re revisit the, the whole experience I was quite hesitant but I thought okay let's just apply it we'll see maybe I won't get it you know and also the fear of making it itself I mean there's so many you know thoughts which are going contradictory and everything but then I just applied it anyway with the whole project how I want to do it and everything and there were four projects selected across the world one of it was mine and it took about uh, two years because in between as you know one year was a whole lockdown and a whole lot of uh, because of the pandemic we could travel we could shoot and all that but when we did start to do some research and uh, also collect what kind of uh, narrative are we going to give the film it was kind of um, very painful, I must say, because, uh, you know, I was, uh, as it is, Gauri is, is always, I, I keep uh, telling everybody, she makes me work at least once a day in a week. Because some paper, some terrorist challenge or across the world keep asking me, can you send a photograph? Can you write about her or can you do this? And, you know, uh, one, once a week, it's always been on. And now it's been a whole one year completely dedicated to her. And I think there was both triumph, you know, triumph, uh, pride, as well as, uh, pain while making it actually because uh, pain was when um, uh, when I visited the places she has been to and talked to people she's worked with and you know uh, and also there's proud I feel proud of her because the kind of things she has managed to do you know the issues she has tried to um, address over the years talk about it write about it intervene with the government to resolve the issues to a certain extent from uh, tribals to the Baba Budnir issue, which was her first case, for instance. So it's the journey from 2000 we have taken when she shifted from uh, the English daily to the regional paper of my father's. So from there onwards till her death and uh, till her assassination is what the film is all about, actually. Yeah. And at a time when press freedom is being attacked and people are being imprisoned for their beliefs and their work for the marginalized communities, I think it becomes even more important to talk about Gauri's work and her life. So uh, can you also tell us something about uh, what does Gauri mean to you and what did journalism mean to Gauri? No, for Gauri, I think, uh, I mean, of course, she meant I always say she was just not my sister. She was always my soulmate and my best friend. Because we would exchange, you know, all our creative works to used to fight and everything. But of course, any article, you know, it was very funny when she shifted from English to Canada. She didn't really know that she didn't know the master. She didn't master the Canada language. It took a couple of years to master it. And uh, she re reached a stage after two years when she could correct, proofread other people's writing. Though she was not familiar because we could read, but not really write Canada that fluently or that rapidly, you know. But uh, the same thing happened reverse when she was asked to write later on to Kamil Combat or Tehelka or Bangalore Mirror. So many papers she was writing, uh, occasional writing, freelance writing, weekly ones, column kind of thing. So she suddenly started getting jitters that I can't think in English anymore. You know, it was a shift of uh, over the years. And there's a lot of uh, transformation I have observed while making the film or even before that to what she was when she came from Delhi to Bangalore and what she was here, you know. I mean, I think uh, in Delhi, she was, you know, a little more distanced from the issues. She would write about it and move on to another article, especially since she was working under somebody. Here, she reached out to the grassroots level, you know. I mean, she wrote about it on and on. Every every week, she would bring an article about different issues. 
which was close to her heart and she got involved i mean that's why i always say she surpassed from not just journalist she also became an activist you know so that's how she would uh, not just write and forget about it but she would sit there in the in protest she would go on parade you know pro- or protest walks or um i mean everything she was doing the journey was with her i think she was with the journey throughout and that was transformation and uh, yeah i mean it's been 5 years and uh, i i i mean continue to miss her in various aspects every day me and my daughter and my mother so i mean in like daily day to day activities because we used, we would meet every weekend i would meet her almost every day but she'd spend time with us in the weekends and you know we would catch up on various things personal and professional and all that. so that's something i miss a lot you know and uh, and she would keep me um, updated because as you know the freedom of press is so little and they don't even cover if it's some maybe a small but very important issue in some remote corner of the of the country you know uh, uh, they would just uh, every day it keeps happening they sideline it to some small column i mean or they don't even publish it so these are the things she would talk to me about you know and uh, atrocities which are happening against the dalits or the minorities so these things which were not apparent in the television channel or the newspaper she would discuss with me and talk to me and or even my daughter at that point so these are the smaller but most important issues uh, which she dealt with and she was obsessed about uh, which i miss you know uh, talking to somebody <laughs> about uh, those kind of issues yeah now with our talking about the trial like you also also mentioned uh, it's been 5 years after several delays the trial started in july this year so uh, do you think it's achieve it's going to achieve uh, it's re- really nearing anywhere near the idea of justice that you have in your mind i trust the justice system in spite of many things that are happening recently do i know that uh, you know the court is a, a very very bogged down by a lot of cases and it does take a lot of time in india and it's been 5 years as you mentioned and it's finally started but i'm glad that uh, a couple of things i'm happy about is that it started first of all for one and secondly that the judge which was previously was presiding he dedicated about 5 days a week to this uh, gauri's case so almost like a speed trial which we were asking the government to do so that was that is very good thing it's, which happened again the hearing was on the october 10th to 15th it starts off and uh, yeah i mean i i think Uh, 300 350 witnesses are there in various uh, different you know sectors like uh, the investigation team as well to personal to everybody so i was one of the first one to be questioned because i was the one who filed the fir and yeah they grill me for 3 hours but it's fine i mean uh, it's the the truth should win gauri should get justice in the end of it all that's all but it's not, it's if, even if she gets justice it's not just about her it's about journalists across the country it's about Uh, secular people it's what people are fighting for the democratic and constitutional rights it's all a win for them as well i think i mean it's people who, who it's a, at least it shows that people can't be silenced you know i think gauri lives on uh, once she gets justice uh, not only in the court but I, again as i said making this film is also for me more than winning the award i think it's important that what she stood for is reaching out across the country and i would like to have a uh, multiple shows in india as well especially a lot of students colleges have come forward wanting to screen it and gauri always believed is the you know new younger generation who can be the change in this country we, we have to have some hope so hopefully you know this film will uh, reach and uh, and there was a lot of misconceptions also about her that uh, she was a naxalite and you know things like that just because she had fought you know um, against the naxal and naxal let's say drop your arms come into the democratic society and fight so these are the things which i have tried to clear up in the film as well uh what she stood for and uh, again one more important thing is i have not tried to you know personify her or make her into a grand heroine i have tried to make her as human as possible with uh, you know showcasing her little flaws as well <laughs> so i think it's a humane story the film and uh, which was what guys stood for i think
think you are right to point out that people cannot be silenced. They will keep speaking up in whatever medium they find the most comfortable. In your previous interviews also, you've mentioned that you prefer to express your beliefs and opinions through your medium, that's films. So coming back to the film, what was the message that you were trying to express, you tried, attempted to express through this film? No, as I said, I wanted, uh, you know, there were a lot of misconceptions about Gauri. She was this, she was that, she was anti-Hindu. She, uh, she was not against Hindu, she was against Hindutva, the extreme right-wing attitudes. And uh, I, I tried to clarify all those and also tried to portray what the right-wing people have threatened her, trolled her, fought with her, you know, abused her physically. These are the kind of things which I've shown. Because whatever wing you are, I mean, if you try to resort to violence, that's when... You know, I mean, this is what our country is becoming. It's becoming so divisive, so polarized. I mean, we have managed to seep hatred in each and every family, I think, you know. Every family, there's somebody you don't want to talk to, you know, because your ideologies are different. And there's some kind of, this is what has seeped in over the years. And this blatant, you know, on the arm kind of show, uh, showmanship of upper casteism, which is all there now rampant around us. And this is what exactly what Gauri was against these things, you know. So that's what I've tried to portray. And I mean, by showing her itself, a lot of these layers have opened up, I would say, yeah. And as a last question uh, that I would want to pose to you, Kavita, is that five years later, do you think what has changed uh, when it comes to freedom of speech in the country? According to the press index, it's got worse over the years, but apparently the powers to be don't believe in it. So <laughs> they don't believe in the index at all. But as you know, this is kind of a scare. I mean, I was talking to one of the top journalists the other day and he was telling me that it's become worse. The scenario has become so horrible that you can't, I mean, you can't go out with your family or you can't really, if you, if you threaten every minute, you know, because the, it's not just the, an individual who's trying to attack you or the faceless people who are trying to attack you. But it can be a mob and then the mob, there's no explanation. There's no just, you know, you can't really pinpoint at a mob and jail somebody. So it's, they're set free and this is a scary thing. And as you know, even uh, I myself, when, I, I mean, I'm not a great Twitter that way on social media that much, I would share a few things which of course mattered and <clears throat> which influenced me or, you know, um, which I believed in, uh, the, the, in a subset of issues I would, but there's a kind of a hesitancy in you. Do you have to, can you, do you want to post it or repost it or have any opinion about it? Because you don't want to be dealing with these, uh, you know, attacks all the time. And this a kind of self-censorship, which is seeping, seeping into all of us, I think. And that is, what does it say about freedom of press or freedom of speech? Completely uh, getting, you know, getting lesser and lesser. And one day we'll just uh, be like sheep in a herd that's going without talking and just following the mighty leader, I think. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. Now and I hope, as I said again, the younger generation, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the youth, the students, the movement is quite good. I hope really they stand up and, you know, voice their opinion out boldly and freely, without fear. Definitely. I hope the day comes too. And thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining us today, Kavita. We are hoping to see the movie as soon as possible, this beautiful movie that you've made. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you, Shri. I'm looking forward to showing it to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's all we have for today. For more such stories, please keep following NewsClick and also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.